Thank you for watching the stories of Gold Bear. This book I have with me is Edgar Allan Poe. I'm going to show you the favorite story of mine. Um, dance, the Masquerade of the Red Death. There's a beautiful picture in here. I'll show it to you after. You see, I have soul. Oh, Calvin, I found your blue ribbon. I had two. Tales of the Grotesque and the Arabesque. La Ligia. No, let's find my favorite story. Not the pit and the pendulum. That one's good. <laughs> the fall of the house of Usher. Nah. That one's not so. The cask of Almondilla. That one's good. The tale, tale heart. The beating of the tale, tale heart. But that's not the one. It's not the black cat either. Which one is it? Ah, uh -huh, the mask of the red death. And that's my favorite Abraxas picture. Hi, Abraxas. Looks like me. The Red Death had long devastated the country. No pestilence has ever been so fatal and so hideous. Blood was its avatar, and its seal the redness and horror of blood, dumb. There were sharp pains and sudden dizziness, and then profuse bleeding at the pores. With dissolution, the scarlet stains upon the body, and especially upon the face of the victim, were the pest ban which shut him out from the aid and the sympathy of his fellow men. And the whole seizure, progress, and termination of the disease were the incidents of a half an hour. But the Prince Prospero was happy and dauntless and sagacious. When his dominions were half depopulated, he summoned to his presence a thousand hail and light-hearted friends from among the knights and dames of his court, and with these retired to the deep seclusion of his one castellated abbeys. When the eyes of Prince Prospero fell upon this spectral image, with with a slow and solemn movement, as if more fully to sustain its role, stalked to and fro among the waltzers. He was seen to be convulsed in the first moment with a strong shudder, either of terror or distaste. By the next, his brow reddened with rage. Who dares, he demanded hoarsely of the courtiers who stood near him, who dares insult us with this blasphemous mockery? Seize him and unmask him, that we may know whom we have to hang at sunrise from the battlements. It was in the eastern or blue chamber in which stood the Prince Prospero as he uttered these words. They rang throughout the seven rooms loudly and clearly, for the prince was a bold and robust man, and the music had become hushed at the waving of his hand. It was in the blue room where stood the prince with a group of At first, as he spoke, there was a slight rushing movement of this group in the direction of the invasor, who at the moment was also near at hand, and now with deliberate and stateful step made closer approach to the speaker. But from a certain nameless awe which the mad assumptions of the murmur had in inspired the whole party, there found none who put forth hand to seize him. 
so that unimpeded he passed within a yard of the prince's person, and while the vast assembly, as if with one impulse, shrank from the centers of the room to the walls, he made his way uninterruptedly, but with the same solemn and measured step which had undistinguished him from the first, through the blue chamber to the purple, through the purple to the green, through the green to the orange, and through this to the white, and even thence to the violet, a uh, decided movement has been to arrest him. It was then, however, that Prince Prospero, maddening with rage and shame of his own momentary cowardice, rushed hurriedly through the six changers, while none followed him on account of a deadly terror that seized upon him. He bore aloft a drawn dagger, and that approached in rapid impuity to within three or four feet of the retreating figure, when the latter, having attained the extremity of the velvet apartment, turned suddenly and confronted his pursuer. There was a sharp cry, and the dagger dropped gleaming upon the sable carpet, upon which, instantly moving, fell prostrate in death the Prince Prospero. Long live the king. Then, summoning the wild courage of despair, a throng of the revelers at once threw themselves into the black apartments. And seizing the murmur, whose tall figure stood erect and motionless within the shadow of the ebony clock, grasped in utter horrible of finding the grave ceramics and corpse-like mask which they handled so violent a rudeness and tainted by any danger of forth and now was acknowledged the presence of the red death he had come like a thief in the night and one by one dropped the revelers in the blood bedoon house as the revel and died each in the despairing posture of his hand and thus concludes the life of the ebony clock when out with the last of the gay and the flames of the tripods expired and the darkness and decay and the red held illimitable dominion over all. And with this we say Amen. Thank you God for another beautiful day. This is my Bible.